Okay, so in this particular part, we're gonna be doing the props, the spinner, and really bringing the entire engine together. So down here, as you can see, We've got the parts all laid out just like this. Instruction wise, to be honest, as you might expect, it is pretty straightforward. We've actually got a section for making up, uh, to making sure the props at the right degrees and everything. We need to take this little bit, put the metal in. Really, it's just for making the hole in the middle. Not necessary, you could come through from the other side, I think. Okay, and then down on here, you can see I'm actually about installing the props and then putting them in. One point we do need to make out, if you have got this part here, and you've already done the engine as we have just here already this bit you've already done because it came with the actual front of the engine this is the same part so you don't need another one so technically it's for your spares box or whatever you want to do with it but we've already got that one done so what we need to do this guy here is the actual block that is going to be this part sits in just like this so when we actually put the props in it gives them at the correct angle and everything else like that so we need to cut the back of this down pretty straightforward as always this little guy on the end to be honest i think what we're going to do we're not going to take too much risk so we're going to snip the outer so we don't make any damage to the part itself. Okay, that pops off just like that. And then what we need to do is obviously sand and smooth these in, which we we'll do in a moment. But basically it's just gonna be a case of in with a, a coarse sanding stick. Okay, just to take the height of this out. But what we would do want to make sure is you don't interfere with a line just down on there, okay? So this is quite a coarse one just to get us in the ballpark. And then what we'll do is we're gonna come in and polish. So this little guy will just do by hand. I don't wanna put the machinery near it because to be honest, one slip and you will go far too far. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll get rid of all the resin dust afterwards. Okay, but also using a coarser sander, you're not gonna make as much damage. Then we just got our blue standard sander, which is specifically designed for this type of job, really. But as you can see, it cleans it up. Absolutely beautiful. Good little tip, if you ever wanna get rid of your resin dust, is obviously use a wet towel underneath it. That way it'll grab it, it stops it going everywhere. Okay. And then obviously we've got a little bit on the end. Now if it's a 109, obviously you'd have a hole. This guy doesn't. So then what we've done, we've got it all roughly down in there. Just gonna be a case now, just continuing circle motions, just to polish all that in, get rid of all the damage, all the nasties. But don't forget, you know, technically this is a warbird. You know, it's going to take hits, damage, even flies hitting it. It's going to take its toll on the spinner. Obviously, everything that hits the spinner, let alone flying around really quickly. Let's just get rid of that dust. Okay, and that's it pretty much off quite crudely. And then to finish it, what I would do, come in, we've got the polisher. Okay, and then we can just... This will still sand it. You can use it wet or dry. This is just to get it all in, get the parts all off. Okay, and once that one's in, we can come in with a proper polisher. And to be honest, we're just gonna wet it, and then we're just gonna pop over this. And this will take out all the scratches, any imperfections. Okay, but just be mindful, you don't wanna break any of these side bits on here, because otherwise that is gonna cause a hell of a mess, okay. Now I'm not actually gonna polish this to an inch of its life, we're just sanding. This is just purely to get rid of the scratches. We don't wanna make it too shiny, okay. But just to get rid of any imperfections, certainly mold marks and everything else. And there we go, that is done, just like so. Okay, so that's that guy done. Okay, the props themselves, okay, couple of options. I'm probably gonna go with the razor saw, so I'm just gonna grab that. Okay, so keeping it nice and flat. The weight is on this end, so it's not actually on there. And we assume we are cutting to the inside of which we are, okay, and then just a 90 degree cut, one, two, three, 
Okay, that's those done. Now this guy here, technically, you could chuck it on the belt sander and just cut it clean off, okay? Or you could do it by hand. This one is a classic example, is that the blade won't be enough to go all the way through. Okay, so we'll just show you on here without cutting my fingers off. I would love to use the belt sander. This is why I use the belt sander or a scroll saw, okay? But what I tend to do is just to show you, I'll roll this right the way round So then that way it will all cut off at once, okay? And to be honest, I'm gonna take it over to the belt sander because this is gonna take forever, okay? But that's how you do it. You basically put the blade in, roll all the way around, and then because of the depth of the blade, as you can see, it is enough to go all the way through it, okay? And then you go in that way. Or you can use this big old saw and just hack the hell out of it with one of these, okay? Which is obviously the jumbo one. But anyway, we'll take care of that in a moment. We'll get that one off. So all we're gonna do with these little guys, to be honest, the blades are that good on the saw. It's not even any cleanup required. Got a tiny little tip just at the end. You can see it up there. That's just gonna be a simple job of a, just a sand just to blend and then we just use the sanding sponge because it's softer just to round off the edge just like that they all don't have them you could just use straight into a, a sanding sponge but the trouble is you might snap it so because it won't want to get in there that fast so you just literally in with a okay then you can just pop it round okay last one this one's already broken off to be honest so it just has a little bit of a sand Okay, on there like that. Clean off these parts. And we are good to go. So what I'm gonna do now, gonna get this removed from the block. We're just gonna pop it over on the sand, it'll be quicker. Get that one down and in. Have a test fit, dry fit it all together. Happy with that, then we can go into paint. And then it's gonna be a straightforward job of painting all of these up. We're gonna do the spinner. And then what we're gonna do actually do is put the swirly pattern down into it to show about putting that on. And then once that's on, we can paint it all together. Okay, so we got the template which is this guy just down in here and to be honest I've had to pinch this one from another one that I've got lying around so I've bent some of them down just to pop this on here and it's going to sit on there just like that and then we're just going to come in with a needle and we're just going to give this a nudge into the soft resin and then hopefully we have we've got a little spot just in the inside and then what I can do is I can fold these back out flat put them back in the box and nobody will ever know but actually I've pinched this from another set because to be honest, I have got two sets. Okay, so I didn't realize I was buying the Big Ed one until afterwards. So there's that one done. Now the call out is for a uh, two mil by a six millimeter hole in there. So just grab my canopus. Note to self, must buy a new battery for this. Uh, so we're just gonna put in here six mil screw that in and then what we're going to do is we're just going to tape our depth uh, on here with a little bit of tape. I am out of position today. Okay so what we're going to do we're just going to take we've got our calipers marked to six mil we can then just put this guy in here and we can say well we don't want to go any deeper than that. Okay so then what we'll do we just fold this over and then we'll just fold this back up double check our depth, six mil, that's it. So to start with, with this one, to be honest, normally I'd go over and I'd use the pillar drill, but because I wanna show you guys, what we're gonna do, we're just gonna start it. So this is a smaller bit, just to get us going a little bit. So we're just gonna start in there. And we, obviously this does need to be somewhat square, all right? That's why I would normally use a, a proper drill bit, but uh, on the pillar drill, so I know it is. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna second guess it. So we're just going in. Now the resin is extremely soft as you might imagine, okay? So it's not gonna take much to over drill this. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna place on and we're just gonna roughly, by doing it, drilling it, and then we're gonna turn it a bit and we can work out where center is. See, it's not too much because you could physically get in here and glue this. But what we're trying to do at the moment is just by turning this, we can center. And we're pretty much there, I feel. Okay. So again, we're just going to drill in. And again, we don't want to over 
do the hole because I don't want to come out the front, but I'm looking at it. I don't think any chance coming out the front. Okay. Now, just to double check the depth, we've got our engine and we're just going to place in. You can see we're coming up a little bit short, but don't forget we've actually got this guy. It goes on here like this. And then this guy is going to go on the front. And as you can see, it's a perfect fit. And to be honest, it's square, which is amazing. But it's going to fit all in there, something just like that. Okay, so we're happy with that. So, get rid of the resin shavings. That's those done. Now, to be honest, you've got a choice. You could glue this just on here, like this, and that would be it. But we're going to show ours off. We're going to have it all open, so we want the spinner to be a separate fit. A little bit of tack dust down in there, a little bit of blue tack or white tack, and it will hold it very nicely, okay? But we want to show ours off, so what we're going to do is paint those. At the same time, we're just going to check absolutely that we're fine. And these blades, to be honest, are very nice. These props, very clean. We've got no mold problems on those whatsoever. They're very clean indeed. And the same on this guy, no problem with that. That's pretty much exactly what we're after. But what will happen now, or in a moment, that will go in and then these guys fit in here and then they'll actually be going just like that direction, I suppose. Just trying to work out, is it that direction? There we go. And because it's hold in the mold, it holds it in the correct pitch so when it comes out, okay? But as I said, we don't technically want to do that. Actually, we could leave one in because I'll paint it with it on. But there we go, that's our hole drilled in the back, that's all ready. So what we're gonna do now, move over to the spray bay. Probably not even gonna worry about primer because it's looking pretty good and all the rest of it. I don't think we're gonna have a problem with it. So we're gonna paint the entire thing, okay? So usual thing, down here in the inside, we're gonna do that internal gray that we've used before under here because it's gonna have the same type of weathering effect as well. So we've got all that RLM 2 All that internal color just tends to be like that down in there. This guy down the top here, to be honest, we're gonna paint it. We'll probably do it by hand in the dark iron so we can brush it up the same way as we've done the guns, engines, and all the other bits like that because that looks particularly nice, okay? And then the props, various options. Personally, I'm gonna go down the black route and then we're gonna dry brush and weather and fade back, sand back and whatever, just to make the props look like they've had a hard life, a little bit of abuse uh, and all the rest of it. Then we can obviously do the out of the spinner, basically personal choice to what color you want it to be. And then we can put our swirl pattern in. But next up, we're gonna get these guys painted. Okay, so we got some um, clamps holding the props. We put a skewer up the back end. I thought it'd just be easier to do that guy. Okay, and the end one, well, I think I'll just wing it and hold it, okay? So, uh, actually, I might be able to rig something up. <clears throat> so, the plan of attack for this guy is, actually, we just do that, and then we do this. Again, pushing from the inside, don't grab the outside, otherwise it's going to... Because we do the inside, then we'll do the outside, okay? So, same as we did before. We've got the prop colour, so we're going to be using rubber black. XF85, really like it. It's an off colour. Um, everyone has their personal choice. I know like Steve likes NATO black and everything else like that. But this guy, I just love this colour. Okay, spraying it neat so it's unthinned. All right, so we're just going to do the prop blades just for a second. So a nice dusty coat. Obviously, this is resin, so you don't want to go in there blasting it. Otherwise, you're going to just it's going to bead up and not stick so it has a little light coat and then again on the second again so a little bit of bead up on there that's because it's just too heavy for that initial pass okay so there we go and then what we'll do is once that's dry and obviously this has got something to stick to we can go in there with something a lot more heavy okay just like that and then this guy nice big wet coat that enables us to stabilize it and then once that's totally dry we can then come in and we can do all types of weathering and beating it back and everything else a little bit more okay but the idea is you build it up then go in nice big heavy wet coat and that gives it capabilities to self level so it should look shiny and glossy and everything else like that okay and then again little about and then big heavy wet coat little amount big heavy wet coat okay and it just it'll drive back nice and silky smooth otherwise what's going to happen is you're just going to drive out with texture 
and it isn't going to work exactly well so let's just move those all right so because we've got the black in there and to be honest this is going to be a bit of black so we're just going to do the back half and then the sides in the black now obviously we're going to hand paint over the top of this and in fact we might even spray it okay with the actual metal but if you wanted to you could just do this black in fact i'll do it to show okay do it in black and then what you do is dry brush it just another way of doing it different ways for different tools okay so what we'll do is we'll just get rid of that we're going to do the fastest color change you can do so i'm just going to blow through empty that Okay, and then what we'll do, pop the lid on, then we'll switch over to the RLM 22, which is what we've been using for all the internals. Okay, and then again, this is going to have dry brushing and various things, but we're not even going to bother doing a swill clean out. We're just going to mix this together. Okay, and then this same again, night and dusty, just so it sticks not so important in here because let's face it you're not really going to see it okay but we're going to let that dry it down and then lights wet coat it'll smooth off okay and we'll be good to go all right just like that so what we're going to do just going to let this guy dry for a couple of moments and then what we're going to do is as this dries off we're just going to spray it with a little bit of the actual dark iron buffable and then we can actually dry brush it and we can bring back metals different colors shades and everything else just like that Okay, so back over from the spray bay, and as you can see, we have the spinner. No sign of that moulding mark on there at all. It has got a hole that runs right the way through, as it still should have, okay? So that's done, and you might notice we've actually done the primer colour right the way over everything. Because to be honest, I've also sprayed... This is the guards, uh, the actual cows and everything else. I've done them in primer as well, just to make it look better. And we did the trop child for the guns and everything else like that, okay? So that's all in there, done. So it's all just looking very pretty for when we put this together a little bit later on, okay? Now, this is the the uh, gearbox, is it, on these? I don't know quite how they work on these. Um, generally, we've got our brush, and all we're going to do is go over. Now, this did have a hand coat to be honest over the top of the black of the said dark iron now this is the dark iron color that we use for pretty much everything on this build okay and the usual thing little dusty flicks with the a brush now this has obviously got it on the end here but it's also on here what this will enable us to do is to give us a very nice metallic sheen now the brush gets down into little areas where perhaps you it's a bit difficult to get into because technically you could give this a finger rub and it will have a nice metal look but we need to get down into these little areas and problem parts where we couldn't get in by hand so just doing this just starts us off then once we've got going already we can see we're turning to a very nice metal color all we're going to do is just lightly rub it now by rubbing it it's buffing the pigment the metallic in the black and then it brings it out like metal, which is just exactly the same as we did on all the others. So I'm going to do, can't really get into this area just along here. So we're just going to pop along with the, the brush because I can't get in there. And then just in these little corners on the back side and everything. So that we have the actual... Uh, prop shaft thing coming off the end okay i'm not sure if these are fixed pitch or variable pitch props on these not too sure but that's what we did we actually used the 214 right the way over this which is basically exactly the same as we did with the rest of the engine okay and this guy i'm wondering if it goes on back to front which it actually probably does so this one we use for the engine if you notice we've got good detail on this side and this side was a blank we're assuming that we can actually if we wanted to glue these two together now because when this comes onto the engine and if we can get this all to fit in as you can see now it's going to sit on the end just like this okay now what we could also do i'm not too sure if i'm going to do it on here hopefully you can see the metallic sort of sheen off of this as we spin it round but what i might actually do is be in a situation of going down like we did around the other black areas with a little bit of the oil color it's just the engine oil one here, okay, because it gives it that sort of um, sort of brown tint to it. Uh, but I'm not too sure. I might just leave it as it is, okay. So there's that one on, just like that. But that will fit on there 
So you've got detail on both parts. I assume you can just glue that straight in. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. No problem with that. Now the props themselves, taking our leftover uh, bit of silver that we got on a brush, we're just going to do down around the collar. Okay, because this is where it's going to join the, the metal of the part. So we're just trying to seamlessly, so when it's in there together, it'll all blend. Okay, so it just goes on there like that. Then what we're going to do, we're actually going to brush. I'll get these to hold. We're actually going to brush them, these props, just to liven them up. And it's not like a dry brush. This is just a, a polishing brush. Okay. Now the whole point with this is just to make them look like they've been around. Okay, so as they're going to go around, they're going to polish. At the moment, they're too flat. So what we do, we take that one, we come in with a normal brush. And then hopefully you can see here, what we're going to do is probably take him off, just to make it easier. And this just will rub the paint. And this is nothing on here. This isn't dry brushing, but hopefully you can see it will start to just slightly polish everywhere we go okay and it'll just give it all in then what we're going to do we're going to take our metallic okay and we're just going to go around the front leading edge of it and the trailing edge and we're just going to do side by side okay and then we're going to do some very light areas and this is just to make the prop look weighty because if you just come in with normal dry brushing and things like that it just looks well not very realistic in my eye okay and I know it's all eye in the beholder but again this is what we're talking the minimums remember we haven't actually put anything onto this brush at all okay so now what we're going to do is almost scraping it so we get a difference in the the, the hue because all we're trying to do is break this up Okay, and again in the trail. Okay, so you can probably think, right, well, what actually has he done? He hasn't done much. Catch it in the light. If we show you next to one we haven't done, hopefully you can see the difference. See, immediately this is really, this top one up here is really black. This bottom one is almost looks grey, yet they were exactly the same. Okay, and that's what we're trying to achieve. Just to weather in the black by changing it okay so by changing it we've done a little bit of silver work just to give it a reflective hue to it but what we've actually done is polish it as you can see it's very shiny and now you can take your finger and rub it right over it okay and then next to the other one hopefully you can see top is untreated bottom is treated Okay, now you could go as far as you want on this one. You can go in there and dry brush it. You can physically chip it um, and do all different things to it. But we're trying to keep this particular build not a heavily kicked in. We want it to look like it's worn, it's open up, it's in maintenance, probably not even a very old aircraft. Okay, so all our weathering on this one has been to the point where it's just supposed to be a natural finish right the way over it. Yes, we could go around and think, okay, a late war Fokker Wolf chunks out a bit, mismatch colours uh, and all the bits and pieces like that. We're not actually trying to achieve that type of finish. I want this one to be a standard type of line jet. So as we've been working through all our weathering on this, we've certainly, you know, we're thinking more newer than older. Okay, so little things like the engine. We haven't heavily rusted the exhausts and all different places like that. You know, the gun deck as well. It's quite modern looking. It's very dark still you've got the dry brush in the cockpit as well we haven't taken big chunks of it out and scuffs as if it's a late war one and the same with the undercarriage so we're still trying to keep that theme right the way through and that's something that's quite important when you're doing a build like we're doing here and it's in different stages okay so if you were in a situation and you were like okay you've heavily weathered the engine but then not the cockpit perhaps not the props when it goes together at the end you're going to be all over the place that's when you're better off building the entire thing as a whole paint and weathering the entire thing this though we're doing in sections so we've got things like the engine the cockpit the wheels the gun deck now we're doing the props we still need them all to match up so one does come together it all looks roughly about the same okay we're not going to guarantee that we've got everything exactly the same type of weathering because obviously we're doing them all separate but again it's a bit like these guys in here 
these are still drying off. Literally, that was just a little bit of silver on my finger. Buff it right over it because I don't want chips and chunks. We just want it to look like perhaps it's been used. Okay, so this way we've still got the primer down in there. That sort of RLM02 internal color to everything. But when it's all opened up and things like that, the engine doesn't look too weathered, nor does the panels, the aircraft itself. Although it will be weathered as in faded in, it's not going to have chunks out of it and big bits of you know metal showing through and everything else like that. So that's what we're trying to do. So just be careful when you are doing subsections like this. It's great fun to do. It makes, I think, the build a little bit more enjoyable, certainly a little bit more complex. Okay, but you have to think ahead and just think, okay, my level of weathering does need to be the same right the way through. So what I'm going to do is carry on. We're going to do the other props exactly the same way, get those done and everything else like that. And then we can pop all these parts together, get them mounted up onto the actual spinner section down here. And then we can mount it actually onto the engine. Okay, so next step is doing the actual spinner. So as you can see down here, we've sprayed this guy white, okay? It's been drying overnight, uh, to be honest, no problems at all. And you can see you've got the little spot on the top, which we should have, but generally very, very nice, no problem at all. Now, putting in swells. You do have a couple of options, let's be honest. Okay, the first option is to come down here. And as you can notice, we have two swells. The trouble with these are, it's a decal onto a curve. Trying to get it to conform and to lay flat notoriously difficult just trying to get the angles all correct all right the other thing as well is that it's on the spinner we're going to slightly weather it so trying to weather the decal is going to be a little bit difficult thirdly the problem is it's white now as we know you're always going to get that sort of translucent effect with white decals now you do get two but if you notice carefully you can see actually they're different this one's got more of a hook this one hasn't so we've got two different types of spinner swirls on here this one is a little bit thicker this one's a little bit thinner. Now, the reality is, that, you know, the swirls were done probably freehand. They wouldn't have been very nice. They're going to wear, they're going to tear, uh, and everything else like that. But you still want to make a nicer job. So one of the easiest ways, I think, to do it would to be actually spray it. That's why we've done the white first. So the white is going to be the base. So easy way to do this one would be to technically mark and copy this one okay and then transfer it onto you know obviously some tamiya tape something else like that and put it on as a mask and away you go trying to freehand it on i think would be quite difficult with tape so what we can do is copy this a couple of options again okay we can either come straight in cut this guy out very neatly very close to it put it down transfer it onto paper or we could copy it so what we're going to do is show both ways because it might take me two attempts to get this right so i'm going to show you both ways of doing it so from my point of view the easiest way to do this is to cut one out so we're going to just pick one now as i said it's quite random we're not going to go right up close to it because we're going to cut a lot tighter afterwards okay so what we're going to do we're just going to roughly cut this guy out without taking any of the decals with it okay so we're just going to pick this one for a starter now all the spinners always start where the prop is okay so it's got three props it's just going to hang out okay so that's our beginning of it just like that then what we're going to do is cut it extremely close okay because we want it to follow the line as we did before now you could use obviously some better scissors you could cut it with a knife but I'm just gonna play safe I'm just gonna do it with scissors okay so we're just gonna walk this very gently up here okay just around to the end this one down here has a slight little scallop in it. That's so it goes over the prop itself. And then to be honest, I'm probably going to switch to a set of decoupage scissors. The reason for using decoupage scissors, which are these ones, these have got a finer cut to them. Those are pretty good, but after 10 years of hacking through lead, sprue and photo etch and everything else, they just lose their edge. So when you're doing tight little ones, you might want to find a sharper pair of scissors so this again we're just trying to keep it as smooth as possible as we're cutting and as I say it doesn't have to be exact because each one of these is different that's why you get two in the pack okay so we're just gonna go around okay so it's a little bit 
crimped at the end, but that's basically our line. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just going to smooth off some of the edges. Now we can do this in post when we transfer it onto the other. Okay, but that's it done just like that. Then you can take your 40 mil Tamiya tape, which to be honest, you could use, you could, might get away, but it's going to be close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little bit of 40 mil. So this is the 18, we've got the 40. I don't know if it's going to be, no, it's not going to be quite wide enough to do it on that guy. But this will. Okay, so we're just going to pick this up. Okay, now this is technically take two. To be honest, I had sprayed it, masked it, undid it, and then I noticed I had the swirl pattern on the wrong way because when we just did this, we had it facing upwards instead of downwards. So consequently, the spinner was going in the wrong direction. So, take two. All we're going to do is, exactly as we did before, but obviously we won't show you that bit, making sure that the actual decal is side up, not side down. So, exactly the same type of thing. We're just going to place this right in the middle. Okay, put it at a comfy angle you can work with, and then we're just going to put this guy right down on top. Okay, nice new blade, and then literally as we did before, we're just going to run this right up to the edge, down the side. Now you want a quite a sharp blade to do this, but the thing is, we don't want it to be perfect. I know it sounds really silly, because I don't want like, a perfect one. I want it to be slightly torn on the edges, because I want the, the spinner to look worn and torn okay so is that thing just getting comfy with your turns try and avoid sharp edges because obviously it would be smooth but don't forget they did all this in the field so chances are it wouldn't have been that smooth anyway that's all good all the way around we're just going to follow the blade and try and keep in as much as we can you know, now the other way of doing this, of course, is to photocopy the decal sheet if you've got a scanner printer, okay, and then literally cut it like that and then put it on. Now we get a little bit of tear just in that corner, so we're just going to come around this way and then the edge we're just going to pinch in, okay, that's good, and we're just going to come off this side. So then hopefully we can just peel this back like this. Okay. And there we go. So we've got a little bit of cleanup just to do on this edge. So what we've actually got now is a perfect template to the inside edge just like that. Now you can make as many of these up if you want to, so if you do get it wrong and everything else. So we've got our nose here. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna pop that off of there. And then we're just gonna pop this and try and peel this off the backing without making too much damage. And without taking the decal sheet, the actual decal with it, okay? Because we wanna leave that behind. Okay, just going to very carefully peel that all off. Now, this time, getting it in the right direction. Let's say I have done this twice, one for the outtake show. Okay, so what we're going to do is just place it into a, a corner, into here, because this is roughly how it goes. And then we're going to allow it to self unravel. So, what happens is you're just pushing it along to come up. Now to be honest, when we were doing this, the first time attempt I did it, it was nowhere near it. So you need to sort of roughly work all this out and bring this up. Okay, so what we're going to do is just unfold it because I don't want it, the decal to tear. Obviously we need it to keep its root. Okay, and then all we're going to do is just going to nudge this around. And it's in just like so. Okay, we just pop it onto here. And there is our spinner in. Now, you might be thinking it was a lump there and it goes thin there, but don't forget, this is how the decal does it as well. So we're assuming that that is sort of correct. 
Okay, so what we're going to do is just going to nudge up the, the front. Now, the idea is as well, because we're masking this, we're going to get a step between the two, which is going to enable us to dry brush this in. It'll feather the edge with a wash on the end as well. It'll just grime it all in and make everything pretty much spot on. Okay, so there we go. That's done. So what we're going to do now, take it over to the spray bay, give it a coat of paint, okay, bring it back over and we see exactly what we got. Okay, so over here we've got the, uh, we're using Vallejo, so it's 015 Dark Green RLM 71, which is our nose colour. Okay, a bit of a dollop down in here. Test that. Happy with that. So we're going to take our nose. Now, usual thing, because we're masking, we don't want to blow this in and make it wet. We're going to get run, so it's going to be very light, very dusty coat just to start with, just to get this all going. Okay. Then we don't want it to look too wet, but we're just going to gently build this up over time so we can do it like that. And then if you wanted to, you could literally hit it with a dryer. Just between coats. Okay, and we're just going to build it up over three or four coats. Just so we get a nice colour, because we don't want any bleed underneath. We know it's torn, it's going to give a jaggedy edge and that's what we want, but we don't want it to get wet and bleed underneath and all the things that can happen. We're going to do the inside as well, just to give some continuity, just on the nose. Okay, okay, drying back. And when you do all masking work, just keep it dry, don't let it wet. If it saturates, it's going to bleed underneath and we don't want that at all, so we're just going to dry this back. But what happened is, because it's a mask, we're going to get a step, and that's something we can then sand, blend in, and it's all going to work to our advantage, okay? So again, that's looking good. Last coat, I think. Okay, nice light coat, nothing too heavy. Coming in from all the angles, so we don't get any areas we don't want white. Okay, just like so. Just out of paint, which is pretty much perfect. Okay, so what we're going to do hit this with a dryer, dry it down, take it over to the bench, and we'll see what we got. Okay, so moment of truth, we're going to unmask this. So we're just going to take a pair of tweezers just to nudge this off the edge, and then hopefully, there's our spinner done. Okay, now the idea is it's supposed to be organic, shall we say. So it doesn't matter that that's slightly torn. This is what we want. We could, if you wanted to, tidy that up and make it nicer. But I want it to have this slightly torn edge. I don't want it to look perfect. That's the whole point. Because in a minute, what we're going to do, once that's totally dried, we're going to sand it. It's going to have a wash. Uh, it's going to be sealed and everything else. And then obviously when it mates up to the the end here i might be too wet to touch this which it probably is i'm not going to touch it yet because it's still a little bit wet but that's what we want again we're trying to go for that worn look everything needs to marry up so it's going to be on the same type of weathering pattern that we got down here and everything else but the big difference is this is solid white now if you're using the decal you put the green down green's a very strong color very dark you it's not going to cover it as well you're going to get it in there it's going to look okay but i don't think it'll look as good as that okay so from our point of view that's worked really well but if you did want to tidy that up there is a couple of little techniques which will show you when it's a little bit drier one of them is to actually use a cotton stick uh, a wooden stick and you can slightly blend it now as i say i haven't got any way of really holding this but what you can actually do if you find that that's a little bit off you should be able to like here you might be able to see you can just scrape it off just a little bit and work your way through Okay, just like so. But I'm quite happy with that. You obviously could touch it in with white paint and all the various bits and pieces, but that is what I want. So when that's dried, sand, weather, wash, dry brush, then we can fit it onto our spinner cap and that's our props done. Okay, so I've been drying for a little while now and there is our spinner. Very happy how it's turned out. No problems at all. So what we're gonna do to this one to start with just gonna wear it down just a little bit. What we're trying to do by this is you cause texture in the paint because it makes it more rougher and takes the glossiness off. It actually lightly lightens the paint up, but it does it in quite a specific way. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna use a skinny stick because obviously there's not a lot of it. Pop it back on, I wonder if it'll sit in one of these. No, not quite. Try one of these, too big. Okay, perhaps a square one. 
Okay, stick this in here. Just holding it is a little bit tricky. Now what we're trying to do is just gonna cause a little bit of wear and tear. So as you can see, we've got a, an older skinny stick. Okay, so it's just the polisher. And we're not trying to cut too much into it. We're just trying to lightly wear. Okay, so we're just very lightly Again, usual thing, let the sander do all the work. Probably get away with the bigger one, actually. Let's try this guy just here. That's more like it, okay? So we're not trying to wear through it, we're just trying to cause distress to the paintwork, okay? So we're sort of trying to come off, really, a similar angle to how this is, okay? So then we're sort of coming down in a diagonal it's one of those things you do it a couple of times you get a feel for how far you can go how far you can't okay but you don't actually want to be pushing down on this okay you just want to keep it nice and and smooth and we're just rotating and as I say by coming in with a, 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 a more shall we say a grindier finish or a coarser sponge we should get more texture because the last thing we want to do is come in with anything that's going to polish this because you're just going to reverse it what that also is going to do is take the step out of the white line okay so hopefully you can see it's faded it back again caught it a little bit on the edge which we didn't want to do so what we're going to do is just going to very lightly just around the nose okay just around like that brushing all the dust and then immediately you won't be able to feel a ridge line now between the the areas okay so that's quite nice that's phase one so we just sand that a little bit in okay phase two we're just going to lightly dry brush it now again this is one of those things where you can do a little trick so we've got some silver down on here that is obviously you know polished and flat some areas so we're just going to pick a little bit of this up so you see you get the silver on your finger okay so we've just got a little bit on here. Now what we're gonna do is very lightly rub this in. And what this is gonna do is just gonna give it the bluing effect, which is a word I've just made up, but basically it just makes it look more like metal, heavier, okay? So just by rubbing this right the way naturally over it, like we did the props, like we've done the engines, like we've done everything, it just goes in there like that. And immediately now it makes it look all a little bit more heavy all in there just like that and it's going to blend everything slightly together okay so that's on there and then let me get rid of that off my finger because we don't want that process but now it's just getting that more weighted look and everything else down in there just like that now we're just going to come along i'm going to give this a simple wash right the way over it so to be honest we can use a dark dirt wash okay you can find a brush a cleanest brush would be nice it's had chemicals on it let me find a brush that hasn't like that one so we're not shaken up this bottle completely we've just done it a little bit but all we got here is the dark dirt wash okay without shaking it so we're just taking some of the more watery stuff off the top okay and then what we're going to do is just going to put this right the way over the nose and then because it's going to get caught in that texture that we've sanded into it also what's going to happen is it's going to get caught with that metallic fleck and that's why you might notice I'm not going in there gallons of this Okay, but we want to go absolutely everywhere. So it's going to grind down the white because the white we want to look quite grimy. We can see the panel line that's in there now and everything else like that. Okay, so it's all that same thing about knowing when to do certain things. Okay, so for instance, when we were doing these inner doors, we wanted it to have that more oily look to it, more shiny look. Yeah, we've got to imagine that this engine is spitting a little bit of oil, there's a lot of airflow, it's a lot of misting going on in there, pressure. Okay, so what you have is inside doors and stuff like this, you can see we've got a little wet spot, that's not wet, that's actually dry, mixed in with a little bit of buffing with the metals and stuff like that. That's because it's an internal. This is on the outside, it's a lot drier, it's in the front, not a lot of dirt gonna go on it because it's pushing through the air, self-cleaning. So that's why we're going in with something like the wash. The clay wash is gonna give a grime look, a dirt look, without making it look oily and, and all the rest of it. Okay, so that's what we're doing on that one. We're gonna let that one dry off for about 10 minutes, come back and then we can wipe that off. Then we're gonna do a final little bit of dry brushing just to sort of give it that more look of 
almost sanding. Yeah, it's going through the air, it's a lot of spinning, it's going to picking up various particles of dirt and dust and things, which are going to almost sand and polish the actual uh, prop spinner on the nose. Okay, so that's what we're going to try and recreate. But again, we're still trying to keep on that theme. Everything's weathering at the same rate and doing the same thing. So we're just going to leave that for 10 minutes to dry off, come back, and then we can wipe it off. Then we can get going with some dry brushing. Once we've done the dry brushing, we can put it all together and we're done. Okay, so this has been drying, as we can see. It's been drying about 10 minutes, totally dry, no problem at all. Now, uh, I was just gonna do the usual wet trick and everything else, but I think we're still gonna go along this theme of sanding back. So actually what we got down here is a very old sponge. As you can see, it's pretty much worn down, end of its life and all the rest of it. it means it's great for rubbing stuff off, okay? So again, finding very lightly, what we're gonna do is sand off the wash. Now, the whole point of sanding off the wash, you might ask, it leaves more texture and to be honest this is what this is all about because we're trying to leave this ingrained dirty look okay now if you were to be wiping this off what can happen is you can maybe have to take just a little bit too much off okay so by doing it this way again we're just keeping that direction coming off around about 45 degrees okay and all we're trying to do is just to texture in absolutely everything as we go. Now, I'm a great fan of sanding off the wash these days. You might notice it when we did it on the Typhoon uh, because it gives so much three-dimensional look to the actual paintwork. It makes it look like it's got wear and tear and all that good stuff on there. Well, this is exactly what we're trying to achieve here. Okay, so it is just a case of going along. You might notice it's giving us some very nice worn look. Some of it's really worn, and if that happens, I hear you can just give it a little bit more. Okay, just coming out around the nose, we're just gonna get in there. But the whole point is, just gives us more texture, more depth, more of everything we're after. Okay, so the more you was to do this, the more it come off. So what we're gonna do now, it's on there as a rub, but hopefully you can see now, we've sort of got this dirty, grimy look coming all the way around. Okay, we're going to need a little bit of tack just to hold this roughly in place. As I say, just a tiny bit. So what I'm going to do is just going to place a ball right on the side of this nose section. Okay, so then once this goes in, I'm going to push in. Well, hopefully, if I get it on, there we go, it's on. And there is our prop on the front with our swirl weathered in exactly like everything else. Now, to be honest, I was gonna dry brush it, but I'm pretty much happy of how that is. If I was gonna dry brush it now, if you wanted to give it a more faded look, um, then I'd use something like an uh, XF22, that original sort of primer color we're using for everything. It's nice to have a base color you go back to. Usually it's something like XF19. I think it'd be too light because it's on a gray, but there we go. That is our prop section all put on just like that okay so then when you come in and you marry this up to the engine we have now this okay which somewhat try to go that way somewhat works okay and there we go that is the prop section done again taking your time treating it like a little bit of a mini model and everything else like that you can come away with something if we have it the right way up that's giving you a good look like this now to be honest this section should glue onto the back here. So what I'm going to do is, I am gonna give that a whirl with a tiny little bit of glue. So I'm gonna use a little bit of CA glue. Reason for the CA glue, it wants to be a nice strong fix. I don't want this moving around too much once it's on. Okay, so we're just gonna got a tiny bit of medium CA. We just do two, three, four tiny little drops just to get that in there. And because we want all this to line up, we're gonna pop this back boy on the back here and then we're just going to put the prop right in on top so it sticks perfectly to that first one that's in there and is in position just like that but there we go that is the prop section done and completed okay and as i said treating things like mini models a great little way of doing things that way you'll spend more time more attention and everything else like that doing it especially when you're working with this aftermarket don't forget everything we've done in the course of this build-up has been just with the aftermarket stuff making it as best as we can but hopefully you can see what we've tried to achieve here we've got the natural sheen uh, on the props you catch them in the light looks like it's been tearing through the air wearing down not chipped to hell just wearing through again the whole point of this one 
it's making it look like it's used but definitely not abused we want this one to look like a line aircraft rather than something that's been kicked in okay but there we go but by doing that spinner as well we weren't looking for perfection we're looking for realism so again by going through this and putting in the band and masking it up and doing it that way having a few little errors it all adds to the realism of the actual area itself but there we go this is enabling us to come up now with something that's going to look absolutely stunning on the finished aircraft. But there we go, that is the prop section done and completed.